Totally, you can totally tell. Um, you know, in the NBA, you just don't exert a lot of physical energy when you're not playing games and practice and stuff. You don't practice very long, but you know, you got to have that mental edge, that you know, that focus when you're when you're in the gym mentally. And it's pretty easy to tell, um, you know, whether you're locked in or you're not. Um, you know, by about five minutes into shoot around. So um, that's kind of our main goal, our main focus going in the next couple of weeks is just really like locking in our mental edge because um, we're plenty physically talented. We have enough skill on this team to win. It's just making sure we're dialed in, um, you know, all 48 minutes. When you, I know you might not have your like, NBA or your day to day routine like totally down yet, but when you feel like it, it, if you feel okay, that wasn't my best shoot around, best focus, how do you correct that before the game? What do you do to get yourself in the right place? Yeah, I usually try to a, get more rest, um, whether that's the night before or taking a longer nap. I mean, I always nap before games, but it's, a little bit different trying to rest a little bit longer and um i mean it's it's kind of just what i do before games you know they're either i'm kind of out and about or i'm just laying on the couch like trying to visualize and um i do a lot of visualization too just live like where i need to be in certain spots shot ball going through the rim um you know making plays on defense that kind of stuff too helps now that you've kind of got a good chunk of games under your belt what is the coaching staff Yeah, I mean, things are still kind of coming at me fast. I mean, it's not that the game hasn't completely slowed down for me yet, but um, being more dialed into the scouting report, you know, I mean, as you've seen for the last, you know, our eight, our eight games, like I get spot minutes. And when I come in, I got to be really good. So, um, you know, I got to make sure that I'm focused, whether I'm the last man sitting on the bench or that I'm checked in at the table. Um, I got to make sure that, you know, if I get in the game, I know exactly what we're doing, you know, the personnel. And that's kind of the challenge of being a role player in the league. Um, but, you know, every good role player can tell you, you know, exactly what that kind of means for them. What do you think you've got the opportunity to have right now with the top of South? And like, what's kind of the key to, to making the most of it beyond the obvious? Yeah, yeah. I mean, outside of the ball going through the hoop. Um, it's what I talked touched on earlier, you know, making sure I'm coming on the floor and doing everything I can um, to help the team, you know, gain a lead or, or make up a difference while I'm in. You know, I mean, even when DB out, you know, I'm not going to play more than – 20, 25 minutes in a game, I'm not going to start. So um, I got to be able to make sure I come in and be ready to go from the jump. Um, and I can't skip a beat um, when I hop in that game. And it's getting easier to figure that out for me. Um, with more games, it'll be, it'll get better. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a challenge. And it's um, something I'm getting better at. And I'm starting to really enjoy too. A couple of firsts for you recently. First three, also your first check for the What was that like? Yeah, I was pretty surprised. I mean, I've gotten texts before, but never in the league. So, I mean, might as well get that one under my belt earlier rather than later, I guess. And um, obviously, there's quite a few Gonzaga players in the league. It's going to be fun to look at soon. But you are playing for Eddie Miller. I know they beat your teammate with the Zags. Uh, just what do you think that will mean? Oh, it'll be fun, man. I mean, I'm looking forward to getting those guys in, in the town. Killian Tilly plays in Memphis, too, and he's one of my best friends. And so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing those guys and catching up and um, kind of checking on them and how they're doing. Uh, it's it's a bond that runs, you know, runs deeper than just basketball. So um, those guys are my brothers, and I'm excited to you know have them into town. Hey, how do you think Gonzaga and Coach Few prepare you guys? Yeah, I mean, if you watch our games, they're like the most kind of NBA. We're the most NBA like team, really, in college. Just the way that we run and, and push the ball and the offense we kind of run. Um, so I'm able to understand concepts, maybe we'll understand spacing and, you know, without getting super technical into the basketball parts of it, you know, you just learn how to be a pro, you learn how to work. Um, you take care of your own business. Um, a coach expects you to be doing more than just what you do on the practice floor. And, you know, all that stuff is easy carryover in the NBA. Um, and it's made my transition much easier. Do you keep in touch with coach? Here? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. I do. Compare, um, does it give you notes or? Uh, no, I mean, he just, he, not really. I mean, he just, he's focused on leading his own team. So, I mean, he checks in with me, asks me, asks me how I'm doing and just kind of asks questions about how, you know, the Wizards are using me. And um, he's becoming less and less of a coach and more of more of like a mentor and a friend, um, you know, as I left the program. What's some of the best advice you received from Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, you got to create your own rhythm. And what that means is like, I talked, I touched on it earlier. Like you could, I could be sitting on the bench for 10 minutes 
and all of a sudden, boom, Corey, you're in. And, you know, a minute into the game, ball finds me in the corner, and I'm shooting a three, you know, fresh off the bench. Like, you have to be able to create your own rhythm, whether that's, you know, being locked in and dialed in while you're on the bench, doing, like, warm-ups or trying to, like, stay active while you're sitting, um, asking questions. So it's just kind of the role that I'm in, is that I have to be put into a game and expect to perform right away. And I'm not, you know, mad about that. I'm not happy to be in the game, but I just got to be able to, um, you know, make shots when I'm called upon and do things right when I'm called upon whether I've been sitting for five minutes, 10 minutes, or, you know, a whole half. No, it's typically the veterans who give me the advice. Um, they're the ones who are kind of pointing things out for me that I might not have seen on my own. Denny's more of a, he's been more of like an encourager, cheerleader for me, just kind of always picking me up, um, you know, whether I do something good or something bad. So um, the vets are there for advice and Denny and I are kind of trying to, I mean, it's still tight. I mean, it's kind of his rookie year too. I mean, he spent a lot of time injured last year, so he's still figuring things out and we're helping each other, um, you know, be the best we can be for the team. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, it's hard, but I mean, so is, so it, so is scoring 30 points a game. And, and so is, you know, making 40% of your three, it's like everything in this league is hard. So you got to pick what hard things you, you know, want to try to you know take on for your own. So, um, you know, everyone has a different challenges and um, as a role player and as someone that's come off the bench, like that's mine. Yeah, I mean, I get, you got to see the bigger picture, right? I mean, we're eight games in and, you know, we're, I mean, what, 10% done with the year? Like, and, you know, in college, I mean, an NBA season is about three times as long as a college season. So I got to be able to kind of see the bigger picture and see my kind of gradual improvement and um, not get too bogged down on one game or one result because the great thing about the league is that there's another one coming in two days, you know, and you got to be able to turn the page uh, no matter what, good or bad. All right, Corey, let's transition to Zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Corey, I'm just curious, how much have you been able to talk with Rui or not been able to, and how have you tried to help him, you know, through the stuff that he's working through? Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to be there for whatever he needs, you know. Um, I don't want to force any issues or, um, you know, try to be, you know, try to get in pride too much that, you know, when, when I shouldn't be, I'm trying to just kind of be there for him and if he wants to, he wants to hang out if he wants to talk that's great and if not um i'm sure he has a lot of um resources in his in his corner that are really helping him i've seen him a few times here in the practice facility um just kind of checking in and, and he's been in good spirits so um you know i'm happy for him making the strides that he needs to make and um i think he'll be back sooner rather than later and i know i think chase touched on it a little bit of asking about you know with davis out has the coaching staff asked you to do, you know, maybe anything differently or are they kind of just, you know, you do your thing, you know what the right things are to do? Yeah, I mean, they, they trust me. Coaching staff for sure trusts me and it's it's all about staying ready. You know, it's all about creating your rhythm, right? Um, these things can they, these things are, you know, there's a lot of themes for being a player like me in the NBA. It's um, being ready no matter what. And, you know, I wasn't expecting to necessarily get into the game when when DB went down, but all of a sudden I'm pulling my warm-up off and I'm checking in. So, um, you know, it's just being ready to go whenever and, um, you know, playing my role, no matter how many, you know, minutes I get. Coach Unsold's talked about uh, points in the game that he really feels like you're juggling those. Uh -huh. I guess that would be challenging more against someone who's uh, from Lance East and maybe can't track it. Is a, a big man advance the paint, uh, what would this give you responsibilities? Really just protect home. That's the main thing. I really can't really just, you know, talk about it you know just the main thing is just really just protecting home protecting the basket as much as we can limiting as many like breakdowns um on the perimeter as much as we can also because if we limit the breakdowns on the perimeter you know they're out they're out stuck shooting threes instead of attacking the basket as much as they can and also just you know being the back end of the defense just protecting the basket how unique as a challenge that's challenging i mean you know he's a really dynamic player 
You know, he's came out this year and he showed people that he's capable of being in the talks of some of the top guards in the league. So we just have to come out ready because he's going to come out and play with a lot of energy. We have to come out and do the same thing. Playing against Memphis and some of the other teams you'll face soon that are just kind of very big front courts and you know, you have to go up against some guys like Stephen Adams and what in Giannis and works in a little bit. Um, what's the key to kind of turning your you guys having smaller lineups, more mobile lineups into an advantage? Really just you know setting the tone with physicality. That's the main thing. Um, coming out, setting the tone with physicality, and playing with a lot of energy. You know, making those guys run and just playing the right basketball at the right time. Like these last couple of games, I haven't been happy with how I played at all. You know, I, I can be a lot better for this team. So that is just my main thing on that. A lot of things that I can do better is just being better when it comes to our pick and roll scheme, talking a lot more, being a lot more vocal and being an anchor for our defense. The main thing also is just protecting the basket as well. But overall, have not been happy with how I've been playing, you know. This question is not an actual follow-up, but I apologize. But, uh, what did you learn about Learned a lot. I mean, Denny is a real defensive minded player and, you know, he, he plays his role and he does what it takes to be able to come out and help the team win. You know, that's that's good from a guy, you know, that's young and is trying to still, you know, figure things out, you know, but he's pretty, he's pretty much already got it figured out. So just the main thing is his confidence. That's the only thing that's really going to hold him back is if his confidence is high or his confidence is low. He's mentioned to us that he's pretty hard on himself. Hmm. Um, next play mentality. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Um, you know, you miss a shot. There's a lot of guys in this league that are high percentage shooters. A lot of guys in this league that are high percentage finishers and everything like that. They miss shots night in, night out. You just got to be able to, you know, brush that off and be able to play throughout the game down the down the stretch because it's a long game. It's a 48 minute game. You know, we got four quarters, 12 minutes each. It's gonna be a long game for sure. It's gonna be a lot of times where we stop. It's gonna be a lot of times where we don't. You know, you got to keep playing the game of basketball because it's gonna leave you behind if you're stuck in your own, in your own head. That's the main thing. So I really just try to make sure he doesn't get too hard on himself to where he's like not focused on the game. Because if you can, if you get down on yourself, you're putting a lot of negative energy onto yourself, and you're gonna take it out onto the floor, and it's gonna mess up your game for you. Um, is there such a thing, Daniel, as mental conditioning aside from when you're out and you know trying to get back up to speed physically? But do you feel like sometimes you need a few games like, to ramp up mentally? Um, that just depends on you know how you look at it. I would say it just depends on how to, what type of person you are. You know, you can really just be. You said how like being out. Yeah, that's the main thing, like injury wise. You, when you, you know, when you're coming back, mm -hmm. not just getting your condition back physically, but sort of mentally. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, that night in, night out, you see your team playing and you're not out there on the floor. You see a lot of things you can do that you, you know, want to be out there to do to help the team and stuff. And it just can really wear and tear on you. You know, you can be in a dark place like, you know, damn, I'm not out there. Or you can just be able to put yourself in a position to where you can prepare yourself to be ready to go back out there and play the way that you were playing before you got injured. That was just my main thing. I hated being out of the game. Um, you know, I hated being out for so long. I wanted to come back after um, that Atlanta game, I wanted to come back um, and play Boston again. But my main focus was just really taking my time and not rushing the injury because I didn't want to come out and hold the team back. So it takes a lot of, you know, I would say mental processing and it takes a lot of, I would say, just self-awareness to just be able to sit down and just say, hey, take your time. But just the mental part of it, you know, it just depends on who you are and how you go about it. All right, we'll switch over to Zoom. Uh, Christos. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Uh, what is the biggest challenge for you at this point of the season? You have first two, uh, first time uh, two straight losses. What is the biggest challenge to, uh, to challenge bounce said? back? Yes, yes. Um, really just the biggest challenge is, you know, coming in and playing the basketball that we want to play. That's the main thing. You know, it's a lot of frustration throughout the team, I'm pretty sure. And we want to be better than what we played the last two games. So main thing is coming back and being better and making the right plays, 
being better on defense, so on and so forth, and just being able to come out and just play the basketball that we want to play. And how could you describe the atmosphere or the mood in the team ahead of the game against the Grizzlies? Um, we want to win. That's the main thing. You know, we took a lot of time if, uh, before practice to talk about the things that it takes to win. And, you know, it just it's upon us to just really just figure it out and adjust to certain things, you know, to be able to mentally and physically prepare ourselves for this next game. Thank you very much. Neil. Hey, Daniel, I'm curious, you know, a couple games back for you now, what's your level of conditioning like? Um, level of conditioning, I mean, it's good, you know. Main focus was just really just getting my rest and taking my time when it, when I got injured and stuff and not really just doing anything to where it could just really just harm me physically. Um, was just to come back and just stay in that mindset of, you know, I was in a good I was in a good condition frame, I would say, when I before I got hurt, but when I came back, I was a little bit gassy, but you know what I'm saying? Getting back into the Florida game, it takes time. So I really didn't want to just come out and just trying to rush it with the conditioning wise. I just wanted to take my time. So conditioning is getting a lot better from when, you know, I got hurt. You know, it was only, I would say, three days. Well, um, so I, I would say. Um, but just really just like I said, taking my time and slowly getting back into the Florida game was one of the main focuses when it came for me coming back to the team. That's just the main thing that I would say kind of helped me out for sure. And I know that you obviously did a lot of conditioning work with Alex over the summer. Where would you say that you are, you know, now and you know, as you get back up to hundred percent of what you're able to do compared to last season? I mean, I'm good. At this point, you know. I've been back, what, two games, I would say, and conditioning has gotten a lot better because, you know, coming back that first game, I was real tired. <laughs> so um, I just really just had to take the time out to really just get as much sleep as I could because um, I low-key was, you know, losing a bit of sleep while I was hurt just with dealing with the mental aspect of it because I wanted to be out on the floor, so on and so forth. And just now just getting back to it, I just take my time with it. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And last question to Wayne. Hey, Daniel, you, you said you weren't really happy with the last two games you played. Coming into this Memphis game, uh, specifically for you, what would uh, make you feel like you had a great game? Coming out of playing with a lot more physicality, coming out of playing and controlling the glass and really just protecting home, you know, doing the things that I'm here for instead of just trying to focus on all the stuff that is going to, I would say, happen for me throughout my career. You know, just doing the things that um, the coach wants me to do, go out, block shots, go out and play defense, be the anchor of the defense and have high energy, grab rebounds, you know, do a lot of dunks, do a lot of, you know, the stuff that I'm used to doing to be able to help the team. And the uh, same thing I asked coach, uh, although it was a loss, um, and you said you weren't really happy with, with how you played, was it any positive from that game that you did you could take over uh, to your next one? Mm. I really can't say it's probably a lot of people that saying I did a lot of stuff that, you know, was good for the team, but all in all, yeah, I sucked the last two games. You know, I know it was my first two games back, but I'm not going to use that as, as an excuse. I got to be ready to come play on the floor night in, night out. So the main thing is, is just be better than the next one. You've talked about defending points. You guys are going to have a unique challenge. Uh, you know, just like every other night, it's you can never leave one guy on an island. I think he's got the responsibility of guarding a player of that caliber. Um, you know, it's it's got to be a team effort. You know, all five have to be working in, in concert uh, to show a shrink, give the at times an illusion of help. But well, we got to get in the gaps early because you know, otherwise you're, you're generating two way stunts, which opens up the three. His ability to get down uh, downhill, get into the paint, to your point, is is unparalleled. Um, and it's, it's really difficult to guard. So we got to be in the right position at the, at the start of those possessions. Otherwise, we're kind of chasing your tail. The dynamics of your roster, uh, you've got size at a lot of positions, but it's centering on the tallest tall guys. You know, your, like your next few opponents are some of the bigger teams in the league. How do you kind of turn that into an advantage, like, I guess, going small and being bigger? Well, you know, the, the biggest advantage, I think, um, in going downsizing would be, you know, our mobility versatility for three or four guys to handle, make plays, to stretch the defense out a little bit with our shooting. Um, you know, at times that you're at a deficit on the glass, which is, you know, a big part of it. And that's a, it's an area, obviously, that Stephen Adams excels in. 
but uh, you know, once again, it's not on one person. It's all five have to get involved. Our smalls have to do a better job of, you know, turning, finding bodies, and making sure we're not giving up free runs to the rim. Uh, he, he responded relatively well. I think right now he's still listed as day to day. Um, we'll see how he um, finishes this evening and then uh, treats in the morning, uh, making just make a decision after shoot around. Hey, coach, uh, wondering what you guys worked on in practice. What's your plan today? Uh, a lot of film. You know, I think some some of the good, you know, a lot of bad. Um, but when you watch the film, it you know, sometimes you take the emotion out the night before and you realize we, we did do some good things. And um, even on the offensive end, when we, we got stagnant at times and we struggled to make shots, we still generated a high quality looks that uh, we didn't make. And uh, so j just so they see that we're doing the right things, keep doing it, you know, and I think uh, eventually we'll start making those shots, but don't get bored with it. At times, I think we, you go away from it, not from a, a selfish standpoint, guys just think, all right, I got to make something happen. We're not making these open shots. It's on me to do something. And it, it creates a snowball effect. It goes the other way. So um, just stay the course and I think we'll be okay. All right, coach, we'll head to Zoom if there's no more questions oh, from the room. Oh. Take it from the room. <laughs> Sorry. No, he's been better. Uh, I think he's playing with a little bit more confidence. Um, I think the defensive stuff gets him going. Uh, and a lot of credit to him. He's done a great job individually, keeping those guys in front, moving his feet, you know, absorbing contact, playing physically without, you know, for the most part without fouling. Um, and we're, we're asking him to move around a little bit you know, play some three, play some four. And that's, that's hard to do um, with the lack of practice time, lack, lack of reps. Um, at times it can be a little confusing. So, you know, it is what it is right now because we're, we're down a few bodies and, you know, we need him to do that. So it's a challenge for him to kind of step, uh, step it up a bit to catch up. But at the same time, we have to find ways to help, you know, minimize the thinking, uh, just go out and play. Oh, sure. I mean, that'd be nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I think sometimes we can get it in our own heads and, it, and, the, uh, and it, it, it starts to wear on us where just play. All right. You missed a shot. All right. There's nothing you can do about it. You're not getting that look back. But I think when you start dwelling on that mistake or that instant, you know, for him, it, it, it affects the next possession. And he can't afford to do that because it becomes possession after possession after possession. So just kind of minimizing it. Fail quickly, move on, learn from it, and um, uh, think next play. I think he's done a terrific job. I mean, keep doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one thing if it's hurting us and, you know, where it's a deficit or an issue we have to try and fix, but it's bode well for us. And he's done a great job of keeping those guys in front, making them take tough contested twos. Um, so I have no problem. They want to, you know, it's almost doing us a favor. Yes and no. <laughs> Plead the fifth. Uh, no, I, I think, you know, you have to be smart with it. You can't overreact, I think, at times. And, and sometimes you do have to rattle the cage a bit. Um, it's it's coaching. You know, I think guys, they, they get it. They understand when the, when it's going to happen and when's the right time. And I don't think it's, uh, it's good to always kind of come in hitting, you know, and, and, and just be forceful and everything. At times you just have to take a step back and let them air, air some things out. I don't think it always has to be us. I think there are times they know that the problems and they're just looking for answers and, and searching for a way to fix it. When you did have to do that, did it elicit the response you wanted? At times it does, at times it doesn't. It's just, you know, it's kind of having a feel for reading the room. And, you know, at times guys will respond the way you think. And, uh, you know, other times you have to find different ways to, you know, 
get the get the best out of it. And we asked for it about Ruby, but if you there was but just to clarify, you said some good spirits needs to spread the back sooner rather than later. Do you yeah. have any update on that? I don't have a timetable, but no, I would agree with that. I mean he's uh, he's been around more, uh, he's working out, so it's it's good to have him in the building and, and be present. Or yeah, physically in the, yeah, physically in the facility. Yeah. Everybody's got pet theories to why she was down around the night. Do you have one? I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I don't think it's it's one one thing we can point to and say that's the reason. Um, uh, people say it's the ball. You know, it's the uh, the rule changes. It, it might be a little bit of everything. Uh, has your starting point guard tried to? any point since you've seen Pierre sell you on the benefits of crypto? <laughs> not, not, not yet, but I'm willing to listen. Uh, I'm open to at least listening. What's the word that you used last night, Brett also used it as an at this juncture of the year, should you have to say that with this group, or is that almost expected? Oh, I mean, it's, it is expected. But if I have to use it, then we have to use it. You know, it's, uh, I, I think everyone to a man knows, you know, where, where and how we fell flat, you know, last night. Um, so we can't dance around it. it. You know, that that was an issue for us. Um, our start of the game, I thought, put us behind the eight ball bit where, you know, we dug ourselves a hole a bit, it allowed them to shoot to a big basket. And then when we did decide to get defense in the game, it, it was too late. Uh, in terms of your depth, Obviously, at the beginning of the year, you said a lot of guys kind of looked down the bench, and now it's a little bit being in question. Now, with obviously, Dobbs, it's good to hear about uh, Kyle. Uh, how does that impact kind of like your game plan? Well, we don't, we won't make any final decisions until we know exactly who we have available, but it is what it is. You know, it, it's got to be that next man up mentality, and we're going to ask guys to do a little bit more just to, you know, hold water. But there's nothing we can do to change that. So it's our mindset has to be, we, we got to dig deep, find a way and pull together. All right, coach, we'll head over to Zoom. Uh, we'll start with Christos. Hello coach, hope you're doing well. Uh, before the season start, you mentioned that uh, you were worrying about uh, the mindset of your team. As the season goes on, what did you see about the mindset of your team, especially at this point of the season, that you have first time two losses in a row? Well, I think it's going to be a challenge for us. Um, you know, it's easy when you win games, and sometimes you let things slide that you probably would, would address, um, you know, otherwise. But, you know, I think this will be a test of uh, who we are, what we're made of. Um, it's, it's certainly not going to be easy, given the fact we're down a few guys. But, you know, it's, it's certainly going to be a challenge. And we can't shy away from it because no one else cares. <laughs> I don't think uh, anyone out around the league is, is worried about the fact that we have injuries or, you know, we're playing without a few guys. So we got to find a way. Um, you know, uh, the group that we have is, is enough and we'll find uh, the best combinations to make it work. And also how important part and how beneficial for you is to have players like Bradley, Montrezl, the experienced guys, the veteran guys in the league that, uh, adjust uh, that made the adjustments about your philosophy as a coach. You know, they, they, they've been around, so I think they have a pretty good feel. I mean, you could throw Kyle in that group, you know, uh, Pope in that group. They've been around, so uh, there, there's nothing I don't think the strategically new for them. It's just more the terminology, what we call it, um, and just getting you know the synergy in, in, in that side of it. But they've been around long enough to know that there's certain things we do. That, that are very similar to where they where they played before or how they played past seasons. It's just kind of getting the the feel, uh, the teaching points and, and the verbiage down where we can be all be on the same page. Thank you very much, Wayne. Hey, coach. Uh, again, we always a long season. You say this may be the first bit of test of adversity coming off a two game skid. Uh, can you give a sense of just the, the team's uh, presence going into tomorrow's game with the Grizzlies? Well, I hope there's better focus. Um, you know, it's easy to say that now after a film session, but uh, tomorrow morning when we have a shoot around, that'll, that'll be telling. Um, I think we'll, we'll play with a little bit more energy, more urgency, uh, hopefully with a level of uh, physicality. Um, 
we didn't start the game with those things. And uh, we saw it improve, but, you know, it was too late at that point. You know, I think it, uh, it's got to be our mindset going in. We're, we're not going to ease our way into games and think we're good enough to flip the switch. Uh, we've got to come with the right mindset uh, to start. And hopefully, you know, that, that puts us in a position to have success. And you just alluded to the film session. Um, were there any things last night that you uh, liked or uh, took away and hopefully that would carry over to that Memphis game? Well, you know, offensively early, I thought we generated once again, a lot of good looks and we've struggled all season to make threes and I'm not, we're not going to dance around that. We have to find a way to aid in our own recovery, but you know, we're, we're creating the right type of type of shots, the shots that we're, we're preaching. Um, we got to get in the lab and, and find a way to make them, but uh, I'm okay with those. If we're, if we're missing those shots and those are the right type of, of shots, then we'll live with it. Cause I think at some point it'll go our way. Um, when we get out of character, those are the things we want to kind of try, try to avoid. Thanks as always, Coach. And we'll finish up with Neil. Hey, Coach, in those film sessions that you guys are having today, what kind of, you know, truth speaks are, you know, coming out, like are players, you know, stepping up, taking responsibility? And, you know, how does you think that bodes well for you guys moving forward? Well, you know, I give our guys a lot of credit. I mean, all the film sessions have been productive. Uh, some of it is teaching, some of it's reinforcement, and, and some of it is just, hey, open dialogue. What do you guys see here? Uh, what do you like? What do you don't like? What don't we understand? Um, just to get clarity. Uh, so it's always, it's not always, well, you know, you didn't do this, or you didn't do this. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit of everything, and I think it's, uh, it's productive to have that back and forth, because uh, it's easy for me to stop the film and say, hey, you should be here, not here, but I'm not out there doing it. So to have a guy who's in the, in the mix in that moment, it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, so their, their feedback is warranted. So we, we take that to, uh, into account and weigh that in as far as, you know, how we do things.